This video was produced by Thank you very much for coming and we'd like to thank some of our uh, sponsors. Uh, thanks to the College of Arts and Letters, College of Integrated Science and Engineering, College of Science and Mathematics, Cross Disciplinary Studies and Planning, Department of Computer Science, Department of Graduate Psychology, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Department of Philosophy and Religion, Department of Physics and Astronomy, General Education, and Special Assistant to the President for Faculty Diversity and And I'd like now to turn it over to David Jeffrey. Thank you, Tracy. Um, welcome to what I trust will be the first of many logic and reasoning, uh, logic across the discipline conferences. I am David Jeffrey. I am, it's my privilege to uh, serve as the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters. As Tom said, one of the, one of the sponsors of the conference. Fearlessly scheduling the conference on Friday the 13th as a way further to thumb their noses at irrationality and superstition. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Tracy are today fulfilling one of the many commitments they made to the university three years ago when they approached me about a logic and reasoning institute. The LRI, they said, uh, would benefit several departments since logic and reasoning are crucial to disciplines across the sciences mathematics, and the humanities. The Institute would encourage interdisciplinary collaboration and provide opportunities for undergraduate students to study logic and its analytical neighbors, promote literacy and analytical reasoning, encourage interdisciplinary teaching and research collaboration, and increase interaction across the disciplines and the colleges. Finally, it would benefit the larger JMU community by holding symposia, colloquia, and conferences. Among its other notable successes have been the creation of a logic and reasoning minor, the presentation by LRI faculty members of their pedagogical research at several international conferences on education, the creation of a logic laboratory, and the signing by its creators of a contract to edit a book on the philosophy of logic with 23 internationally known contributors. There are now 15 faculty members from various disciplines involved with the Institute and the logic and reasoning minor, and I want to congratulate all of them, particularly Tom and Tracy, for making this uh, so successful a venture. Now my pleasure to introduce the president of JMU, Jonathan Alger. Mr. Alger holds a BA in political science from Swarthmore College, his law degree from Harvard. He's worked for a Fortune 500 company, the US Department of Education, and the AUP. He served as assistant general counsel at the University of Michigan, and immediately prior to becoming our president, a senior vice president and general counsel at Rutgers. I've been in education, higher education, a long time. And this is the first time I've ever seen a president volunteer to come to um, a conference like this. So thank you very much for doing so. And please welcome the president of JMU. Good morning, everybody. A quick mic check. Those of you in the back, would you raise your hands if you can hear me OK? OK, good. So the sound is working. Uh, well, it's great to be with all of you today, and I want to welcome our, our students, faculty, staff, and also distinguished guests from other institutions who are here to join us today. Um, now, as I understand it, we will have, and I don't know if they're here yet, but that we may have students coming from Turner Ashby High School and the Shenandoah Valley Governor School. Are any of you here yet? Wonderful. Well, let's have a special round of applause. Thank you so much for being here. Just so you know, JMU is a wonderful place to continue your education. So just a little plug. Uh, I, I also want to make a very special welcome of our guest today to Dr. Tanaka, our presenter who you'll hear from later from the University of Auckland. Is that correct? In New Zealand. So you've made a very long trip 
to be here. Thank you so much for being here. We look forward to, to hearing from you later. Um, so this is an exciting time for us and an auspicious moment to think about starting this new minor in interdisciplinary logic and, and reasoning and to have a conference like this on campus. And it, it's a time, as we all know, in our society, we are constantly hearing uh, about technology and science and the need for, for people with, with certain technical skills. But what this conference reminds us of is the foundational roots of reasoning that apply across many fields of study. And so I think it's a particularly good time to have this, this conversation. And I have to say, I loved hearing that list of, of the different departments that were involved because it underscores the fact that this is an interdisciplinary concept, that we should be talking across those silos in higher education and finding ways to work together. And, and I believe when we have that kind of interdisciplinary approach, that it can lead to all kinds of unanticipated benefits as faculty and students interact with one another uh, who have different lenses on which they look at problems. Um, and so it can lead to surprising synergies for us as an institution. So I, I want to thank all of you uh, for being willing to engage in those conversations. And while this may be a new program here, it's certainly worth remembering that this field has ancient origins. The study of logic, as you all probably know, goes back uh, really to ancient civilizations, both in the East and the West, and to great thinkers like Aristotle and, and many others, and was part of what they called the classical trivium, along with grammar and rhetoric. So very ancient roots. And yet, it's a field where we still have a lot to learn and discover, and that's what makes it exciting, I think, for us today, and that's more relevant than ever in helping us to address some of the big challenges all around us in our society. Now, I, I have a confession uh, to make. When I first heard about this conference, uh, I am a lawyer by training, so when I heard about logic and reasoning, my mind immediately went to the law school admissions test and the logic game section. Anybody ever taken the LSAT or thinking about law school perhaps? Okay, so you, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, there's an interesting part of that, that test uh, where they actually have these different logic games. Now I actually learned, uh, learned to love them uh, after preparing a little bit because I found out there really was a system of reasoning that you could employ and it would help you get to an answer. Now the nice thing there was it was very neat and tidy. There was always one right answer, right? Uh, now I somehow think that our lives are not always quite that neat and tidy as, as the LSAT logic games, but I think this minor will certainly go much deeper and these conversations will go much deeper as we deal with the challenges around us. As a lawyer though, I have learned the importance of logical reasoning and sorting through really complex situations uh, and problems that we face. And, and this, this sort of skill has helped me and certainly a lot of my colleagues to see how different points might be interrelated, to understand and evaluate options, and to anticipate and analyze how specific choices can lead to specific consequences. So it's been very helpful to me in my own career, and I continue to use those logical reasoning skills that I learned in college and in law school, and I took classes in mathematics and philosophy and religion, I think pretty much every department they listed in my own liberal arts uh, education. So I've used those skills, certainly, not just in college and law school, but throughout my career to analyze problems and challenges uh, that I have confronted and continue to do so as a college president. And what I have found is it's allowed me to bridge the gap sometimes between uh, different disciplines and vantage points. I've also found that by having that careful and consistent use of logical reasoning, it can help us to do things like organize facts and evidence, and as a lawyer, I must say I like to do that, and move us beyond just emotion or intuition, but to really, to really challenge our own assumptions, our biases, uh, the things that we might naturally jump to, conclusions without really thinking them through carefully, that it's really helped me in the search for truth, in the search for answers, uh, in the search for solutions. So as old as, this, as the roots of this program might be, its relevance, I think, is very timely today. And, and just one other piece of that relevance that I know is, is important to all of us, we talk about being the engaged university, engaged with ideas in the world, and the world, it turns out, actually does care quite a bit about the importance of logical reasoning. 
Uh, there's an association that we've been dealing with nationally called the Association of American Colleges and Universities that focuses a lot on the continuing relevance and importance of liberal arts education. And they recently worked with employers, major Fortune 500 companies, on a poll to determine employer priorities and consensus on important learning outcomes in college. And the results were published in something called the Employer Educator Compact that some of you may have seen earlier this year. Uh, so it was interesting to see what did they think uh, were the important skills that college students needed to have for the workforce. And the findings actually reinforced the fact that employers want more than just narrow technical skills from college graduates. 82% of the employers cited critical thinking and analytical reasoning as key intellectual and practical skills for all graduates. That was the highest response for any such skill set in this category. 82% of the employers said that that was important. 81% cited complex problem solving, which was the number two response in the survey from the employer. So given these results, we think that the students in this program are going to be highly valued and have good job prospects. But that's, of course, not the only purpose of, of this minor. It's to help us to ask much deeper and more enduring questions as well. And, and by the way, as I understand it, it's not offered at any other institution in Virginia, if I've got that right. So it really will be, I think, a strategic advantage for us going forward. And it does reflect very much our university mission. When we talk about producing educated and enlightened citizens, who will lead meaningful and productive lives, who will be engaged with ideas in the world around them. This minor will help them to do that. It will certainly improve our national standing and stature even more. Uh, and that is an exciting thing to think about as we go forward for JMU to be one of the nation's leaders in thinking about the importance of logic and reasoning and its continuing relevance in our society today. So I want to thank everybody who's made this possible, the Institute, uh, the minor, uh, the conference today. It's, it's a, a, a big set of challenges that you've agreed to tackle, and we're really grateful for the leadership that you've all provided. So thank you so much, and have a great conference. Good to have you here.